in uh, a vote by the people and for the people, not just something that is good for commercial interest, but something that is for for the people and by the people, because that's what it was given for, for the public cause, for the dogs, for the, for the people that come and, and uh, play at the park or the baseball field or, or w- whatever it may be. But I don't think it should be valued as, as a piece of property to be up for sale, but to be for the purpose of, of the public and for it to be there for generations to come because I think that's what they had in mind when they donated it. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to come forward? Yes, I see. Come forward. Hello. John Wester, 455 Fiddlewood Road, Vero Beach, 32963. I just, I just, I just cannot believe that we have made our city such a slave to the dollar. I mean, we're asking seven-year-olds to pay for their own parties. Come on. I mean, has it ever really sunk into this level that I have to tell my grandson, if he wants to do it, tell every kid to bring five bucks to pay for his birthday party? I mean, it, it's, it's totally ridiculous. As far as the value of the property, why don't we get a price of J.C. Park, of Humminston Park? Maybe we can sell them all, or maybe we should lease them all. But they're all valuable pieces. Why is only our piece always under the microscope? It, it just, you guys are always after the dog people. It, it's just the way it is. I'm in charge of raising money. I cannot raise money. I can't tell you how many businesses would give us money. But they're like, it's not a park, okay? It's a strip of land. The city council, as we all know, can take it away in 10 minutes. Who's going to give you 10 grand for a two-month dog park because you guys want to sell it to somebody or lease it to somebody so they can cut down the mangroves, put a marina there? Do what it, I mean, can you just tell us what you have in mind for it? But maybe, maybe it's better. Maybe we should have a casino there because that would bring a lot of money to the city. We seem to be so desperate for money. I mean, how has this come about that we have to charge little boys for the park? Thank you. Thanks for your comments, and uh, I can assure you we'll address this in January, and presumably you'll be happy with the results. Anyone else want to come forward? Bob Reed, uh, 2725 Country Club Drive. Um, I'd like Council to consider the appearance to Vero Beach for visitors and people who are thinking maybe of purchasing property here as snowbirds or whatever. A lot of them do purchase property on the beach and uh, a lot of them have animals. Uh, A couple of Saturdays ago we were at the farmer's market with petitions and we had a little sign out and to be honest we really didn't have to do much petitioning. People came to us wanting to sign when they saw what we were collecting for. And there was specifically a couple who moved from Alexandria, Virginia, and they, this was their first winter down here as snowbirds. And they were saying that in Alexandria, um, all the restaurants you could take dogs, all the stores put out dog bowls for the dogs, um, It was such a dog-friendly place they'd moved from. When they came here and started walking around and saw no dogs allowed, no dogs allowed, everywhere, they said, this is long overdue, we'll happily sign it. So I think if you're looking ahead at the appearance that people and the impression people get of our beautiful city of Vero Beach that you take into account that people, a lot of people, have pets. They have small pets, they have large pets, but they have to go somewhere to exercise those animals. And the socialization of dogs is so important. Um, If you see the way dogs interact, they actually behave far better than people. They work it out. And it's, it's interesting to watch them, how they do it. They really do work it out. And boaters, I've seen recreational boaters here who say when we 
retire and we stop voting, we're going to move to Vero Beach. And they've told me the reason for that is the dog-friendly area and the friendly people they meet there. Dog owners are such a community of friendly people. And that specific area right there is where they meet them. Right there, they get off their boats, they come to the park with their dogs. And some come without their dogs. Visitors to Vero Beach, I've seen, come down to the park. They don't have a dog with them, but they come and get their dog fix. They want to interact with the dogs and say hello. Their dogs are up home. The uh, gentleman on Date Palm who spoke, uh, I think his wife was right. Because I don't remember anything he said other than all the picture I got was him sitting with a calculator trying to work out the volume of urine. And I think he would have a far better life if he got a dog, walked down the road, and came to see us. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, could I yes. go on with my, my next item, which kind of really falls at all this? Um, I would... I certainly would concur with many things that have been said. Um, I have two dogs of my own. I have no children of my own, so my dogs are, are, are my family. I, I certainly relate to that. This city is particularly dog unfriendly. I concur with you wholeheartedly. And I'd like to suggest that maybe council would consider a resolution to at least allow dogs on leashes in our parks. We've had the uh, Bark in the Park event that I think it was very successful, and I, I believe that we'll be having that again, the Humane Society, that has allowed it. I think our dog owners are, become, are much more responsible than they were back in 1984 when we passed the first ordinance banning dogs leashed or unleashed from all our parks. And I think it does create a very negative environment. Um, back in, I guess, 2011, they did pass some dog-friendly dining. So I know that you will see in some places that, you know, there are dog bowls outside at Osceola or at uh, Cravings that people can at least bring their pets. But there hasn't been a place to bring our pets. Um, I would like us to uh, request city staff to look at the park areas that we have and let's come up with the best place to have a dog park. I believe in dog parks. I think it, they're a wonderful, wonderful facility. Um, I do have reservations about that particular area being the ideally suited one for it, but I'd love for us to go and explore. What else? Well, I, I, well I, our, yeah, are you in favor? I guess I should take it one at a time then. Um, would council consider a resolution to allow dogs on leashes within our parks? I had checked with Mr. Slezak. It'd be around $100 to have some poop bags available, containers that we can, can be made by city staff and have that available. So at least we could take our, our dog for a walk, you know, the Riverside Park, that great little walking trail that's there. If we have our dog on a leash and we're take care of it, you know, at least to start opening up some of those areas. As long as we maintain the area as a dog park, it's a dog park now, I'm certainly agreeable. I would agree with that. But if you're thinking about taking the area away that's a dog park, I'm not for it. If it's an addition, not an addition. It's an addition, yeah. fine. Right now, I'm not thinking, right now, it is a proposal on its own. It's doesn't, it has no strings attached to it, Mr. Mayor. Ms. Turner, you're talking about all parks allow dogs on leashes. Correct. That's what I got. Beaches are considered parks. Would we exclude the beach? Um, there I would have to say that we probably would have to continue to exclude the beaches. And I say that merely because of protecting the turtle nesting and also for yeah, some sanitary conditions as well in our beaches. So my assumption is you're just asking for a consensus of council so that they can bring Correct, it back. so that we can prepare a resolution to bring okay. forward. My, my only concern is that dogs that do come into the parks... Um, since they'd be interacting with other citizens, that they have, they're tagged and have the rabies vaccines and up to the standards that, that we require in case one got bit. That's all. Just that, you know, you, your dog is legally but I vaccinated. Think that's a, yeah, that's a county requirement. I mean, we're all under that. It, to have yeah. your dogs registered. Probably what we would do is bring back an ordinance removing the prohibition from the park regulations mm -hmm. and just changing it to saying, you know, dogs are allowed on leash and they have to comply with all other animal regulations. Mm -hmm. you know? 
Oh, Mr. Dig has a comment. I hate to bother you on this because I really didn't want to interrupt your situation. Bear in mind, when you take a look at this, you have your pocket parks. They're small parks. Mm -hmm. So if you have a number of folks come in with big dogs, they could harm, because in these pocket parks, the neighborhood parks, very little children play in them. So bear that in your decision-making. But this is still dogs unleashed. I'm not just talking about unleashed dogs. I understand that, but I'm just saying, think... As far as little children, even when people bring in their bigger dogs on leashes, sometimes the dog could get away from Just bear it in mind when you're taking a look at it. Yeah, piece of, the piece of is really quite small. And, and taking that one as an example with the play equipment in there and so on, and having seen small children play in there, I, it, it might be better to have a list which includes most parks but doesn't include them all. I, I, I'm just thinking out loud. Certainly we could, yeah, exclude some, but I mean, I'd love to at least to open it up on a test basis and, you know, if we have a problem with it, but I'd like to see us be able to take our, yeah, take our pets, have it more dog-friendly area. Well, yeah, you have my agreement. So, Mr. Kant, would prepare that resolution for us? Thank you. Well, you want a resolution that perhaps to allow it temporarily as a trial basis, or do you want to go ahead and amend the code? I'd say go ahead and amend the code unless there's any objection from council. I, and we would have specific parks that we wouldn't include, like for example, Pocahontas Park, which is just a playground for children. I don't think a dog would yeah, do. You need well to, you'll in need there. to tell me which parks you want to allow gotcha. the on leash dogs. Like Mr. Dag is or, Mr. Dag you know. and, and Miss Graves are probably well equipped to do that. I, I can't think of other than Humiston on the island. And and uh, J C Park, Th those would bother me a little bit, you know. The, but I think they would be well qualified to tell you the ones that that could be a problem. Right. So if we uh, turn it over to Miss Miss Graves to pick the ones that that she thinks could could be a congestion problem. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, with all the barbecuing and Sunday, dogs unleashed could be a problem. At you know at at uh, J C, they really could be. And, and if right. council wants to fine tune the list at first reading or public great. hearing, you can. Okay, great. I think it's Thank a useful you, suggestion. Thank you for bringing it forward. Yeah. Uh, okay, we're to five, so I believe that. Well, I, I think she still had an issue oh, on, I'm sorry. on the actual dog park that exists now. I'm that, sorry. That was done by resolution. Well, actually, yeah, we don't have a dog park at all. I mean, we have a dog exercise area. And I think it's still like to see, yeah, a, look at what it would take to actually have a dog park, what kind of costs would be involved. I mean, whether it's fencing or f spraying for flea and ticks, adding water, having water accessible, benches, that kind of thing. I'd like to see it, a proposal from staff on that. Um, where was I? I heard so many things today. Um, I think... Our concern is that... Excuse me, ma'am. Can I get your name for the record? Oh, I'm so sorry. Mary McQueen, 4141 Ocean Drive, 32963. Is that this land is going to be taken from us at the discretion of whomever without us, the people, having a chance to vote on. And it would be easy to say, oh, well, we'll take $2 million. We need the money. That's fine. And then the following year, where are they going to get the next $2 million? Where are they going to get the next And the land is gone. It's taken from the people. Please consider that. That's our concern. Did I miss anybody else? Okay. Uh, I believe we're through with that topic all the way through four. So, Mr. Mr. Mayor, I, I just need a little clarification. We want to get a cost of development of a dog park. Is that? No, I... That, okay, then that's not what we're... Okay, I, I just don't want to make sure. Yeah, I, I mean, think what action are we taking on this? Well, well the action we're taking is, on, as I understand in January, we'll have a list of properties to be included, proposed list for city council to consider to be included in char charter item 5.05. .05. That's number one. Number two, separately, Mrs. Turner's proposal to allow dogs on leash subject to rabies, uh, licensing, and all those things, will come back in front of us. I, we have not considered anything broader than that at this point. Well, we did have the zoning change. Zoning change in what sense? In sense that we change it from commercial marina to park two. 
Yes. That, that's on the, the dog exercise area asking for a zoning change. From commercial marina to... to Which park. is favorable. In other words, you don't really, you want it zoned as park, not as marina. It's currently, for whatever reason, it's currently zoned as marina. Change it to park. You want to change it to park. It gets you closer to what you want. There's no chance of being able to add it to the charter as it is now. Yes. No chance. No, we, we will bring that back in January, a proposal of that effect. It's the same arguments. Right. Again, all over again. Correct. If, you're, if we're going to talk, you better you go, need to go to the mic. But. Yes. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, can I yes. make one quick clarification? Could you come to the mic, please, Jim? Yeah, I'm sorry. Thank you. The uh, Friends of the Dog Exercise Area proposes to pay in its entirety the building of the park, the ongoing maintenance of the park, probably through an endowment, et cetera. So, and we're going to try We've been trying very hard to work with the rec department, and they've been very cooperative. Rob Slezak has been great. So... Uh, hopefully, if that meets your all approval, we'll continue to do that and give you the Yes, uh, you know, the comment I would make, uh, is all right if I comment? Certainly. Uh, the comment I would make about that is that's a successive step farther down. The first thing we've got to do is make it a park. Uh, and I, improving it is a good idea. Now, we would have to talk about the specifics of improvement. In other words, the plastic chairs that are there now are not, wouldn't be as agreeable as something I would think you would think about. But I think we have to take the first step before you consider your steps. It's a step on the way. Uh, I, I wouldn't. I would caution you to think that uh, that uh, at least speaking for only for myself that we would say that if a child wanted to go in there with a frisbee, they couldn't. It's still owned by all the people. If you see what I mean. Go ahead, Mr. Turner. No, but once you look at a dog park and you consider a fencing, then. That's excluded. Yeah, and, and you, we would need to have a dialogue about that. Benches, so, no. Yeah, a lot of... We have an architecture... Uh, Landscape architecture. Yeah. Design pavilions in the... Yeah, and once... People to come around and everything. So we've yeah. Got, well, down the road, as you present, yeah, some kind of a, a plot plan or whatever. I mean, what is the best use for that land to serve the, to serve the needs of the citizens? I mean, could we have a beautiful boardwalk there or do have other, have other facilities that would serve us, not just the dog dog group, but I mean all all the citizens of Vero Beach? So that's all I'm saying. Ms. It'd Turner and I are saying the same thing, and we have to consider all the citizens. And it was planned some time ago, and I told one of you this earlier. We do have in our possession a plan for a boardwalk from um, uh, from the marina all the way down across the front, and uh, we don't. There's no plan to carry it forward. There's lots of issues with it, uh, but that's the sort of thing that might appeal. But it would have to be acted upon duly by by council, correct? Right, and we, but we need a long-term vision for it. I think that's one thing, is to developing our riverfront and having it a beautiful place to be. And I mean, you know, it doesn't just happen. You have to, you know, I said, have a vision, get a group of people that are interested and So I think we're taking a step in the direction you want to go. Where it ends, we'll have to see. Is that satisfactory? Thank you, yes. Mr. Kramer. Back to oh, the yeah, please, please come to the mic because the public can't hear you, yes. uh, Ms. Ross. I'm sorry. I just don't. This is Del Ross, Vero Beach. Uh, I, I think we're sort of blowing this up to include things that really become expensive. I didn't expect it to be expensive. I expected to be able to have a place where a dog can exercise. I agree with you that when I first came here and I saw no dogs here, no dogs there, no dogs, I thought maybe some church had, advice, had, had some objections to dogs. I don't know. But uh, all I'm saying is, you know, you're talking about boardwalks, you're talking about it serving all, the, all of the citizens. Uh, I don't understand that. A dog needs exercise. It's good to have a park where you can walk a dog, definitely. That's important. But if this is, I'm talking about what we have now, where a dog will exercise, run, run after balls, play. Not with boardwalks for all the people and so forth. We have a boardwalk. 
Uh, I don't want a big expensive thing with, a, with pavilions and, 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 and buildings. I just want it pretty much the way it is. Some people want a fence. Okay, I can understand that because there are do cars that come by. It doesn't bother me. Most dogs are self-preservatives and they don't go there. So I want it simple. I don't want expensive. I don't want it going on taxes like magistrates and so forth and so on. Keep it simple, people. This is a small city. It is not New York, where I come from. I want it small, and we don't care if we miss a, a, a meeting or something or other because a magistrate didn't show up or something, or you didn't have somebody. We understand it's small, and therefore there are problems sometimes when they're small. I come from big cities. I love the smallness of this, and I don't want a lot of this and a lot of that, and everything must be efficient, and everything must be this and must be that. Try and keep it simple. Costless, for the most part, except maybe for a fence which we will all pay for. I don't want money, big money, for this. It's important that we be able to say, bring your dogs. Bring your dogs to Vero in the fancy hotels. Thank you. I'm sorry I'm, 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 I'm that strong about it, but I just want simple. Thank you. Okay, your point. Okay, uh, I will, with that... I think we're ready to move on to uh, five. Uh, well, I guess in other news, uh, I've, uh, I've got an item on there for utility commission change. Um, quite frankly, this came about by uh, observing the functionality of the way the finance commission works. Um, basically, I'm just suggesting that each council member have their own appointee. Uh, the county has their own appointee, and the Indian River Shores has their appointee. Um, what I'm trying to do is... Uh, prevent council members from not having any representation on a utilities board and alienating a certain section of the utilities uh, commission. Um, what I'm asking is if they, uh, the city council would uh, approve of the idea of restructuring the utilities commission to be similar to the finance commission. Oh, comment by council. I don't see any problem with the way it is right now. I, I watch those meetings all the time and I, I don't have any problem. I, by default, named someone there because I went out and recruited him and uh, convinced him to join the committee. So I have uh, what I consider someone already. Uh, I, I'm happy with the way it is. Are you, are you okay with the way they're appointed? If, if the mayor just shows up with a list of people that he wants and kicks everybody else off, you're fine with that? No. Uh, when the mayor shows up with a list, we decide amongst ourselves who's going to be on, not the mayor. Well, it wasn't the way it was done last time. I agree with you. It was uh, helter-skelter the last time. It wasn't well done. I'm just trying to find a balanced approach where no one person takes over the whole situation. Yeah, yeah I agree. Ms. Graves. I mean, I think if it sets up a protocol where it's, it's established and you don't have a repeat of what Mr. Fletcher and Mr. Kramer are talking about and it allows each council member to be represented, then I'm for it. I think if uh, if any of the members are worried about this, if they do the math, they would still end up with their majority. Mrs. Turner. It's a good idea. Yeah, we're worried about the math. When, I guess, are we getting to a point then that every commission is going to be a representative by council appointees? You know, and I guess I proponent of that on some commissions to make sure that we have people there. Yeah, you know, that we have the, the five. Members, we have people that actually attend the meetings. Um, the, the, the point is, is that all committee members are um, representative of uh, council members, um, although some more than others. I'm okay. saying let's just balance the thing across the board. Mr. Stradley, saying you want to be recognized. I do. Uh, Scott Stradley, um, Chairman of the Utility Commission. And uh, I can count. I'm a CPA and a CFP, so... Uh, but I'm not here to, to uh, wasn't worried about that at all. Um, I do know that um, I was interviewed by city council in about three years ago. Um, and I do know that there's been a, uh, a sense of alienation with some of the council members to the committee. And uh, that's been addressed several times by members of the uh, utility commission. Uh, myself and several, at least one other. 
um, here that, you know, we represent everybody. And um, I think that uh, if this is what we need, the direction we need to go um, in order to ameliorate those concerns, I'm in favor of it. So I don't have any, I don't have a problem with it. I think it's a, be just fine. Um, I do have a couple questions about the um, implementation of it. And uh, the first is, how would we deal with alternates? Um, one of the things that was sort of interesting to me, uh, the Code Enforcement Board often doesn't meet because they don't have a quorum. I've never had that problem. Um, I've, I've, you know, I'd, that's kind of like, wow, that's kind of, I, we always have a quorum. We always have a meeting when we have one scheduled. So um, maybe that's because we have active uh, alternates. And uh, the way I do allow the alternates to function within the committee is that they do have full rights to speak and to take part in everything. But if they're an alternate, they just don't get to vote. Um, so um, my question would be, and, and I don't see how alternates, I see how the seven members would be selected. I'm curious at how alternates would be selected. And then the... Uh, at large. At large. Uh, each commission, each Council member would name one of their own, and then uh, the rest would be named at large uh, by a vote or just an acknowledgement of the council, city council. Okay. All right. Um, and then there's the second question, just if this passes today, and again, again, I'm not opposed to it, in favor of it, actually in favor of it. Um, if we would the committee be dissolved today? I'm, my, my question is if we don't have a meeting scheduled for December, um, but we did reserve the right to, if something came up we needed to address, we could schedule a meeting in December, and perhaps we may need to have a meeting in January before uh, it's reconstituted. And I just would, would like to know, you know how that would work, too, as well. Well, in order to do this, you'd have it would be an ordinance change. So you do have two meetings that you have to minimally go through. Okay. Um, additionally, um, I'm sure there's going to be you know some survivorship of, of members from the old board to the new board. Hey, that's a, again, that's that's not my concern. Um, I just uh, I'm, I'm sure there will be, and I'm sure there'll be, um, and, and that won't be a problem. So those are my my two questions. What would be the status? Would we? Um, would, would we terminate it today, or you're saying now? It would no, it'll, we're, we're not looking to terminate anything. No, we're, it would be the, similar the to the way the finance committee okay. is. People roll off, people roll back on. But it but, would require an ordinance and two readings to make that change, because it would be changing the selection. You're looking at April team. before it could hap actually happen at okay. the shortest time possible. Okay. Because right, you have to have the two readings. So. And then the selection process. Okay. And then you, the, the alternates would be at large, and that. That, and I, I, maybe I missed that, uh, Mr. Kramer, in, in your backup. I uh, apologize if I did. Well, the, the, the problem we do have is that we were really hurried for these items. Uh, I was like Pilar. I didn't realize that uh, the deadline had moved up because of the holidays. Uh, yeah, I actually, the, the report that I had for the Utility Commission was I, supposed to get in there back up, too. So, <laughs> but, okay, thank you very much. Thank you for your thank comments. You, uh, but with that. I'd make a motion. So we just draft the uh, utility. Wait a second. We have. Yes, yeah, sir. Comment? I'd rather have comment before we have a motion. Uh, on, on the utilities commission, are the majority of the people on the commission residents and taxpayers of the city of Vero Beach? The way the current is, they are required to be city residents. Uh, we have. One representative from Indian River Shores that's a point of Indian River Shores. The others, we have the makeup is three city, two county, and Indian River Shores, I believe, Ms. Vock. Right. All right. Well, I, I, as a taxpayer and the owner of the utilities, feel that the city should have, the city residents should be a majority of the, of the vote on these commissions because we own the company. Okay, I, I may be an FPNL user, but I can't go to the board and tell them what to do just because I have a lot of people who are mad about something. And I feel that the Utilities Commission should have a majority of city residents 
who will vote in the best interest of the city, not the best interest of the customers, which may conflict. Because if I have a business and all my customers want me to lower my price, that doesn't necessarily mean it's good for me. It's only good for them. So I wouldn't put them on my board of directors so they could vote and say, lower all your prices and go out of business. So I, I really think that the majority of this commission should be city of Vero Beach residents. Well, I, I believe the way if the uh, the finance commission has it is that the five members that are appointed from city council are city residents. Yeah, but but the, but the county residents don't use any of our finance commission. Okay, the 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 county residents have what they believe a vested interest in our utilities, right. even though they are not the owners. They are the you you know they are our customers, and you have to listen to your customers. Don't get me wrong. Okay. But I still believe that any major decisions should be made by the owners, which would be the taxpayers and residents of the city, and they should be able to have a majority in the council. Now, they might not always vote together, okay, because, right. you know, they have conflicting ways of doing it. But I believe when push to shove, we should, the city, us residents, should have the majority. So we're looking out for our interests first, and then... Everybody else is interest second. Now, they may coincide, they may conflict, but I, that's just the way it should be. Well, of the seven, the five would be from the city. Okay, all right. One thing, just to clarify, um, some, perhaps ameliorate some of this gentleman's concern, the, we're just an advisory commission. We don't make any decisions. Uh, the city council is the one that makes the decisions, and you all do have to be city residents to be on the city council. So, um, But I think that as it goes forward, I, and as Jay envisions it, the five would be, um, the five advisors would be from the city, and one would be from the county, and one would be from the shores, and then the alternates would be at large. at large, and so perhaps some of those could be county, some of them perhaps not. It would be up to, again, the decision makers, which is the city council, who are all city residents. Thank you. So the question is, do we have a consensus to move this? Oh, to, you want to make a motion? I'll make a motion move this to first reading. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? I'm opposed. Opposed. Three to two. Uh, the second agenda. agenda out of my head, extension of the uh, the utility rate increase. Um, you know, the problem with this again is the uh, the information got out late, and uh, the item was pretty much hurriedly put on the, uh, the agenda just so that we could bring it up and talk about it. Uh, I've been watching the utility rates, the wholesale rates decrease from about November December of last year until today. Um, the rates uh, conversely have been increasing since then. Um, what I'm going to probably do is I'll probably just uh, let the, uh, the the finance committee look this over. But um, unless council wants to do this, I think I'm going to probably uh, push this off to the finance commission and bring it back in January. Well, I would have no problem speaking for myself. Uh, and you have an additional sheet here, which is the same as your sheet, but I just tabulated. I did. I'm... I tell you, it's got an X over the top of it. And it was handed out earlier, but here, here's one. Yeah, but I was going to say, still some of this is yeah, yeah, but if you look confusing at the one, and illegible. Oh, well, yeah, yeah it's, it's a total record of the power utility, what we paid for everything for four years. How does the second sheet, I mean, where are well, the columns? Oh, oh, I guess I have it, trouble it, it, following how it, this thing is supposed to be laid out. You could probably just deal with the one with the X above it, but it's actually this wide. So the first sheet is the left-hand portion, the middle okay. sheet's the middle portion. Okay, so it should roll out. And Fine, it's, thanks. it's available electronically, and it's got a lot of data on it. It originally was kept by uh, Jim Stevens, and, and before, and actually John Lee, and uh, after that, I've been keeping it from the bills, and I took it in. I took it versus J sheet here and reconciled it. So that they're rough, they're they're the same ninety nine point nine not identical. Yeah, Tom Richards has been doing that. And one. Tom Richards has been doing this. So we've been tracking the what we pay for outside power for a long time, and you know essentially if you look at the column with the X on top of it, uh, you know the most recent is sixty nine forty seven at the bottom, and you go up all the way to January of 10, it was 60-60, then it was 78-15. And of course, there's some ups and downs in it because of whether units are running or not running, one thing or another. 
But I, speaking for myself, uh, the power rate increase was not justified in that we voted on, and, and I personally would rather go down. I'll make two other comments, too, and I think they're interesting. One, I looked at the September general ledger, and we're not losing cash. The other thing I would look at is this utility, and I realize that our interest, nothing we do to this utility is going to change the fact that the rates are going to be too high because we're locked into contracts with OUC and FMPA that uh, lock us into high cost power. But with that said and done, there's a great number of things that can be done, which Mr. Kramer has pointed out. One of the things he pointed out in his backup is we could burn fuel oil and use up fuel oil. Another one is we paid this year about four and a half million dollars to redo two and five turbines. And uh, we never schedule them and under the OEC contract, which I have here on page B5, you know, effectively, we, we can't dispatch this unit. If you take the variable cost and the fixed cost, uh, we can run that plant and we can get part back part of the two and a half million dollars. My point is, and, and I don't want to raise any hopes, but my point is I do not believe that the increase that we did was justified. And I do not, <coughs> and I do believe there's things we can do to lower the power bill. It may only be four or five or six percent. But I think those should be explored. Uh, anything we can do to lower the power bill is worthwhile. Will we get it down to Florida power and light rates? Absolutely not. So uh, personally, I support your position, Jay. Um, questions, Chair. Um, Mr. Kramer, in your back or in your material that was presented, it said uh, that we could lower utility rates by burning out the fuel oil in our storage tanks. I had a brief conversation with Mr. Connor about that suggestion. Actually, it's it's worth more by selling it to the selling the oil out on the market. And being that we've got to clean those tanks out, it might be best to sell that oil out and then do that as part of the, the, the cleaning that the DEP has ordered us to do. Yeah, I thought burning yeah burning out those tanks was not the, the way to well, go. Well, it, it's an idea; it would save money, but actually selling the heavy fuel oil will actually make more money. Yeah. So we do have an option. Actually, we have an RFP out for that. As you know, the state has cited us and said we have to do inspections of the tanks and the lines. And part of our RFP is to uh, change out some of that fuel oil for services rendered. Yeah. Well, it's your ball, Jay. Well, I wanted to run that by the uh, – the when is the next time the Finance Commission meets? Um, they were going to actually wait until their makeup of their um, commission is complete, and then we'll set a meeting. In January, okay. Well, the one the one thing that I have to to wait on before I make a motion on this is that I do need to see what the how many days of cash that we have to ensure that we are at that right level, and right. then I can do the the unencumbered number for right now is seventy six days, but. The other thing about waiting till January, if we can get through January, that will give us our first quarter of total numbers uh, with the rate increase. And so, but I agree. I think the Finance Commission does need to, to review the report. Well, I think that number was an estimate from, uh, was it October? Correct. 78 days? 76. 76. And, yes. Okay. And, Mr. Connor, we received from OUC the fuel price, their fuel price projections for 2014. Yes, we did, and they had uh, projecting some higher costs, but I, I don't have those numbers with me. No, Tom, Tom did them here, and we have a complete history. If you look at the fuel costs, and, and not for decision today, but if you look at the fuel costs, fuel costs is not justifying that no, side of the that's equation. part of it. Yeah. If, if, you look, you know, if, if you look at the power bill, it's got two portions. Fuel costs doesn't justify the increase. Sorry. If you look at the other side of the equation, which is the capital facility and the operation of that facility, that's a different issue. And uh, so we're only, in looking at fuel costs, only looking at half of the issue. And when you, look at the, when you look at the general ledger and you look at the cash balance, you're looking at the total issue, which includes everything that goes into that. Well, like I said, I, had, I, I didn't have the time I needed to put into this. I had to rush so you're there, saying you'd rather bring it back in? Well, January. what I, I needed to look at the the general ledger to make sure that yeah. I can see a trajectory of uh, of a balance, and if I can see that trajectory going up, I can I'll make the motion to drop them. And I think that's a good solution. I looked at it in September, and I saw that the cash balance was okay, but September is neither October nor November. 
True. And what I'm saying is I don't have current enough information because I didn't get an October general ledger, so I don't know either. Okay. So I think we're uh, this one is you'll bring it back. And yes, I will. Uh, okay, comment. individual council member matters. I believe you, Mr. Wilson. Wayne. I don't know that we have. Uh, I was waiting to discuss that last issue. Oh, <laughs> what's the sense of the council? I mean, we're past it, but no, I think you allow co public comment. Okay, come forward. Thank you, Mayor Charlie Wilson. A um, couple of things. We all want lower rates. We've all said we've all wanted lower rates for a long time. Some people say that I've heard the, the bloggers write, of course, that all they wanted was lower rates. Of course, lower rates does not mean the lowest rate. It just means lower than the higher rate that we're paying right now. And I think most of us are really after uh, a, a, an acceptable rate, which is fair to our, our rate payers. Um, Mr. Kramer, when you bring this back, I, I wanted to talk about this during the utilities part of the conversation, but when you bring this back, one of the things that you've said in the past was that one of the reasons for the increase is because we're paying our attorneys so much. Um, does this rate in decrease in any way indicate your willingness to defund the attorneys? Uh, like I said, if I look at the traje trajectory of the balances of the days of cash, if, it's, if it meets the 90 days of cash, you have no reason for a rate increase. That's not what I asked you. I mean, is, it, is, is this your... Uh, what I'm saying is the attorneys are not part of the equation that I'm using to calc do the calculations. Okay, so, so you can look without defunding the attorneys. The reason that it's important to, to, to understand that is that we are in a position... I just left the county commission meeting, and one of the things that happened at the county commission meeting was the county commission decided to go forward with the public service commission um, um, suit a, with the city, where the county commission has agreed to get together with Indian River Shores to pick up uh, and fund the uh, the action with the Public Service Commission to have the Public Service Commission reassign the territory outside of the city of Vera Beach. Um, so, uh, where this lies, where this becomes a problem, is uh, you're now put in a position with your current contract. If the county goes forward with, uh, with an issue to, to separate your territory along with Indian River Shores, and then you do some sort of counteraction to that, you're placing yourselves in a position of being in violation of the contract that currently exists. Well, let me ask you this. How do you finish a contract if there's a litigation pending that splits up the assets? You're going to have to take that up with the county in the end. But, but well, why would the county be interfering in, in our sale to FPNL? Because they represent 60% of your customers. Does 66% like, like of our customers want to stop the sale to FPNL? Like my, some people are giving up on the city to take this to to conclusion, and and so like our this gentleman very aptly just said, when they first constituted the utility authority, way back when, when Jim Gabbard sat in that chair and Charlie Vatunik sat in that chair, the very first request of these people was to have a, a voice, was to have a voice on the utility commission. And basically the city said, tough luck. <laughs> we own it. You pay it. Too bad. Now what happened was that's when the revolution took place. That's when people said, we're not going to take it anymore. And that's what happened in the county commission today, is they went before the county commission and said, commissioners, when are you done? And the commissioner said, we're not going to take it anymore. So they ordered the staff to get together with the staff of Indian River Shores to pick up the public service commission that will expire at the end of January. Part of it was because of the deadline. They couldn't let it expire. So even though they may want to, the other um, pathway to go forward, they're not going to let the, the Public Service Commission action expire. So they now have the funding, and they have their, whether they get an outside attorney, and they have the lobbyists that are now going to be working to take two-thirds of the business of the, of the Vera Beach utility and reassign that territory. Now, what happens if you do that? You know, if you lose in any business... You had a you had a um, an appraisal and it appraised your uh, the utility at about 180 million if I remember if I remember. So you lose two thirds of your customers. Does that mean you have a 60 million dollar utility because you've lost two thirds of your customers? And then add on top of that that they have to give you stranded cost, which means they have to buy your poles and your wires. 
But they don't have to buy your entitlements. They don't have to buy the $20 million penalty that you're paying. They don't have to buy the demolition of the plant. They don't have to buy anything. What's going to happen, we already know that the OUC contract is a negative $54 million, right? So what's going to happen if they take two-thirds of your customers and gives you a $60 million utility and you have a $54 million liability? You got squat. Right? So, what's gonna, so what we have to now worry about is not just what we've been worried about up to now, and we don't have to worry about where we can't pay any attention to our two-thirds of our customers who we don't care what they think, because they're going to walk away. And the thing that we need to most worry about now is for those of, uh, those of us who think that they can wash their hands of this now and say, it's not our fault if FPL, if FPL walks away, it's somebody else's fault. You own it, you break it, you own it. Because what's going to happen now is if you make a mistake and you violate that contract and FPNL says to themselves, you know, we've been doing this for three years. We've spent $5 million doing this. We can charge the city of Vero Beach $5 million, take our expenses, walk away, join the Public Service Commission with the county and Indian River Shores, take two-thirds of your customers, wait till you go bankrupt. All right? So the thing we need to worry about now is you better hope and pray that FPNL does not walk away. And you better do everything you can to stop them. That includes things like defunding the attorneys or making some action by this county commission or city council, making some action that puts you in violation of that contract that gives FPNL an out. So would you please consider that when you're reconstituting the utility authority? And please consider that when you're considering what your rate structures are going to be and what your expenses are going to be out of your utilities. Because we've been doing this for six years. You've told us it was a done deal, right? If you want to keep your, your, your uh, health care plan and you like it, you can keep it, period. It's a done deal. Are those two of the same things? Thank you very much. <laughs> Ken Dag, 1621st Avenue. On the utility issue, if there's anything that can be done in the near future to lower our costs, we certainly would appreciate that. I don't recall at any time in the conversation uh, that FPL has with you all when they've come in here to speak to you I don't recall them saying you couldn't lower our costs if you could. That's up to you all. You're, you're, you're the people that can do that. Uh, also, um, if you go back a little bit and look at the record on our Utilities Commission, we had the discussion up there uh, on the day as with the folks to include Indian River Shores and I think someone from the moorings to have representation because that was a concern of the council of the day to make sure that the representation was there. I don't think it was said uh, that I can recall that the city of Vero Beach told everybody basically to take a hike and we didn't want to hear from you. You know, we're all working very hard to do what we have to do. If it's uh, a matter of FPL taking the system, that's what it is. You know, we have to go forward. You know, as far as what the county commission, you know, what they do, they do. You know, they're going to do what they feel is the right thing to do. Uh, what they're talking about over there, this all has to go before the Public Service Commission, before it even gets there. It has to be packaged a certain way. There's quite a bit of legal work that has to be done with that. There has been no decision made yet. That's a number of months away, even if it gets to the Public Service Commission. You know, when folks hear hear about the Public Service Commission, they think it's like approaching our council. There's quite a bit to do to approach the people at the Public Service Commission. So there's a lot to be done before they even look of taking away our territory. And if that's what the County Commission chooses to work on, that's their business. We're working here. Uh, none of you today said anything, I, I don't recall, you know, trying to, you know, stop the, you know, the FPL situation. To me, as far as we all know, that's moving forward. I'm going to move forward with the meeting, Mr. Wilson. You had your time. Thank you very much. I'll go talk okay. to Brian. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I'm going to go on to my individual council matters. 
Uh, the Florida League of Cities did pass uh, the recommendation for uh, lobbying the, uh, the uh, Florida legislature on septic tanks and on surface water, including estuaries, the way we'd like to have it done. So we'll hope that that's successful. Uh, I did have the pleasure of welcoming Santa Claus on lighting the Christmas tree, and I did have uh, the pleasure yesterday of uh, welcoming uh, the uh, Vero Man people and the Mercyhurst people and what I think is going to be a great thing for Vero Beach. I had only one other thing I wanted to put on the record, and it's actually a matter of business. I am unalterably opposed to pay parking any place in Vero Beach. And uh, this is the first opportunity I've had publicly to, to state that. I would hope that the issue would go away before March, but in any case, that's my opinion. Mr. Kramer. Well, in the interest of time, I'll make it real short. Uh, I was out of town uh, last week, but I did attend the downtown Friday. looks like a lot of people are back in town uh, for season. Uh, the downtown Friday was quite a success. Uh, enjoyed it quite a bit. Also attended the Vero Man uh, signing. Uh, glad to see that uh, we've got that off the ground and uh, look forward to seeing what's, uh, what's going to come of it. Yes, Mr. Mayor. As far as correspondence, received a few conversations from citizens asking about our special events committee. We apparently have a committee with no clear mission statement. Um, doesn't seem to be under the regulations of the Sunshine Law and not really sure who this commission reports to. And I think it needs some clarification. Well, if you're looking at me, I, 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 I uh, think that we should probably, we've talked about that with Tammy and Jim, and I, I do think that if we're going to have a group meeting or subgroups meeting, I'm, I'm quite honestly not in favor of subgroups of commissions meeting. I think they've done at least, I mean, done some great, great work in getting us prepared for this Friday. But once again, I don't think we can have you know, these kind of ad hoc groups done without any kind of mission statement, without any report, clear reporting. Well, I'm, I'm agreeing with you. I guess the question is, when does it all sunset? It happened before my, you know, before my time sitting in this particular chair, but. Uh, is anyone else, you, uh, Mr. Kramer, do you have any comment? Well, first of all, it, it is under sunshine, and minutes are recorded. Uh, I did that on purpose to make sure that everybody knew what was going on. Um, you know, if you prefer that it's not in sunset and I meet with those individuals on privately, I, I'm fine to do that. Uh, we can always meet with a different constituency, and we can always plan events outside of the, the sunshine law, if you'd like. Oh, yeah, then how do you bring them forward, and how, are they, how do they fit within the... Yeah, how are they reviewed? The Recreation Committee yes. apparently hasn't been a part of this, and I guess when it was first suggested to Council, I thought this was going to be a subcommittee of the Recreation. And well, it, it, it can be. I mean, that's not a problem. Uh, the, the Rec Committee is simply an advisory committee. Everything that we've done, we have come to Council for permission. Uh, you've had the opportunity to, to question it, and you approved it. I mean, quite frankly, if, if, it, if it bothers you, you want another Rec Commission, you can do that. Well, I'd feel more comfortable with it being, if you're not, unless you have an opposition to it, for it to be under the Rec Commission, quite frankly. Well, it'll be under the Rec Commission eventually, but if, if it's I think be, it should go under the Rec Commission. Well, then I'll meet with the individuals yes. privately for the next events. What else? All right. I attended the Treasure Coast Regional League of Cities. Um, we received a briefing from Commissioner Paul Luger, who had, had gone to Washington, D.C., to... Uh, bring our cause of the lagoon to our legislators. There was also a resolution requesting DOT assistance for Florida high-speed rail in creating quiet zones in these areas. Once again, it's all the Treasure Coast cities trying to, to bind together to support that. And we welcomed a new associate member, um, including the Vera Heritage, Inc., Attended the Tourism Commission. I'm pleased to say that tourism in September was up 21.2% from last year. Uh, year to date, we've seen a 13.4% increase in the county. And particularly for September, we had a lot of destination weddings and reunions, which you know, are increasing our tourism. Um, 
I have an FP, FMPA meeting scheduled for December the 12th, which is both the Board of Directors and the ARP meeting, and I'll be reporting back to you on that. Activities, we welcome the Blue Angels. We're here doing their reconnaissance for, for their upcoming air show on May the 10th and 11th. Um, it's good. We talked about Mercy Hearst University and having them organize our archaeological dig, so that was great. I want to remind everyone to shop local. It's important to all of us. The shopping creates local jobs. The independent shop owners invest in our community. Remind everyone tonight there is a free lecture by, with Orca and Scripps at the Emerson Center at 7 o'clock on the Lagoon. All right. Uh, special weekend December, on Friday, Royal Palm Point, 5.30 to 9. Don't miss the fun and the celebration. And the Oceanside Parade at 5.30 on Saturday. I want to wish everybody a very happy and blessed holiday season. Thank you. Ms. Graves. Um, just quickly, I want to remind everyone that they have the chance to meet with our state legislators at the luncheon that the Chamber's putting on um, Thursday at 12.30 p.m. at the Courthouse Executive Center. Here's your chance to come out and shake some hands, say your piece, and otherwise see you guys in January. Mr. Fletcher. I'll be uh, attending the Treasure Coast Regional Planning Council Friday the 13th. <laughs> That's my lucky day. Go for it. <laughs> I could probably stop there. Uh, they're having a, um, another presentation on 750, which I'll report back to you about. Uh, I'm not looking forward to that, but I'm going down to see that. It's in Stewart. Thank you. And I recommend we have a adjourn. Yeah, we stay adjourned.